to the Michigan Interstate Wells. It will be August 14th, 2024. I was decided getting up super duper early in the morning before sunrise just to see what we would catch in Why Not area in Mitchell, Detroit. We would catch 23 this morning. It will be serving BASF SE Chemical Plant in Why Not, Michigan. I would thought we would have a high hood away this morning on 23, but we would only get a Jeep. 5176 would be leading it. It would be long hood forward this morning, but anyway, once he gets done with the BASF chemical plant, they would be basically going back to Oakwood. They had to do some street warning before going into the BASF chemical plant. But this was like 7.30, something like that, in the morning. And by the time they got done doing switching here at the plant, it's like almost 8.30 or 8.20 in the morning. So we decided to go up to a crossing nearby and try to see if we would chase him but we would only be able to catch him a little bit at this crossing and then go back out of load and go for another crossing but once they throw the switch back for the main after the power plant they would basically be done and be heading back to Oakwood Yard so our chase of Trent Free failed. It would be ending up going to basically wanting to empty to EDS Coke battery on Zeke's Island and then transport to Coke Loads with Skill Dearborn, Michigan. But then he would head south and then Basically, he will go on to Flatlock Subdivision to one under the arches today. But we would not end up catching that under the arches. So after we got done with Trent 3, we decided to basically check out Oakwood Yard in Thunderbolt Lane just to see what was going on over there. We would see L575 it would be heading south, but then once we get done shooting that one, we head back to the Thunderbolt lanes just to see what's going on, and we would see a L572 doing some switching here at Oakwood by Thunderbolt lanes.
we would end up seeing some highlights doing some switching here at Oakwood this morning by the Thunderbolt Lane. So we would end up waiting for 572 to get done with their switching. There's the high hood, 1626, doing some switching here at Oakland. And by the time I'm recording this, 572 would end up departing from Oakwood back to Flat Rock, Michigan. But he would run over the old DTNI arches. He would run under them. So we decided just to chase. 572 on the flat rock subdivision with the arches this is my first time shooting the train under the arches I have always wanted to shoot them and this is a great time to shoot them since I would be in this area this morning Once we get done chasing 572, it would say that we couldn't intercept the train anymore at Goddard since there was a whole lot of construction. Once we were able to beat the light, traffic light, the train like cleared up as soon as we were about to turn. So we decided not to chase it anymore, but I'm happy with the shots and videos that we end up getting. I'm happy whatever we got. We were even lucky just to catch 572 and 575 and 23 in the same day. I thought I would have to do this on a separate day, but we just ended up getting lucky. But anyway, we were ending up getting blocked by a yard job doing switching on the close track. The one yard job that had the high hood was on the farther track, so we got blocked by that. Anyway, after we decided just to chill out here at Thunderbolt Lane, we decided to head over to Wyandotte, Michigan, just to see what we could test our luck in. We end up getting a southbound NS in a model 272 that would head over to basically all the way down to. Norfolk, Virginia.
on the last train here in Blind Eye for the day actually. Because my plan is to go to work in the afternoons until 10 p.m. And this was the only morning that we ended up getting to go up towards this area and see what we can find. Like 23, we ended up catching that like a success. The Colt Train Local 575 was also a success. And 572 on the Archive was also a very success. And our last train here was 383 southbound for Toledo, Ohio on the South Shore Line where it had a solo leader. So I'm not sure if this is an extra 383 or this is just 383 with one leader. But however, he was pretty short. But however, whatever time we come back up here, it will be whatever time work schedule in my hands also but yeah I'll see you guys next time I'm back in the area decided to come back home from the Plymouth subdivision and we end up testing our luck of getting R986 on the Flatlock subdivision while underneath the arches again. So we were coming back from the Plymouth. I thought we would saw three trains on there but we ended up seeing one and there was a derailment at Plymouth. So then we decided just to head back home. I'll be dropped off at his place and then I'll go home there. We will not go home yet because R986 is headed south for Flatlock, Michigan. The leader would be an SD40 2W with a roughly P5 on there that sounded pretty good on it. It was long hook forward though, but still. We were just getting pretty. Lucky to catch this because it usually goes on duty at 9. It was like almost 8 30, something like that, in the evening. So we just got to go lucky.
traffic was very bad. And it was also pretty busy since R986 took 15 to 20 minutes to clear. It was getting dark and about to storm on us, so we decided just to end it off here on the Flatlock subdivision by the Arches. Now we're here again in the Metro Detroit area, once again just to catch Q116 by YD. And there's still some Twilight still standing here at YD, so we decided just to catch them here with an IC SD70 solo leads Q116 for Flatlag, Michigan. So we had a incredible time of doing Montreal Detroit area, catching the old history DTNR arches with three trains underneath them, and catching 23 the co-train local 575, and then basically high hoods around Oakwood, and now here at YD with the IC. Illinois Central Death Star leading. 
But I will say this, this will be ending here at the video here at YD. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time in the Michigan State or Buckeye State Well.